Hey everyone, morning. Well, it's still morning here in Kentucky. I don't know where what it is where you're at. Well, I guess it would have to be. We're East time, right? <laughs> hey, cold morning for us here. Um, frost everywhere. I hope your week's going well. Um, how is your week going? You doing all right? You hanging in there? Yeah, you are. You're hanging in there because we're praying for one another and uh, keeping each other lifted up. So uh, continue to do that. Continue to pray for each other. We need those prayers from one another, don't we? Uh, hey, something else too, uh, whenever you might watch this today, uh, daylight savings time this weekend. So uh, you'll want to remember that for church on Sunday, wherever you go to church, you're going to want to remember that uh, the, uh, what, the clocks fall back an hour. Otherwise, what, you'll, you'll show up an hour early, which may not be a bad thing. That might actually get you there on time. Oh, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have said that. But yeah, daylight savings time. Remember that this weekend. Kind of crazy that we're there. It's uh, November, um, but here we are. So, hey, we've been talking about eternal perspective. Uh, sometimes we live with it. Oftentimes, unfortunately, we live without it. I mean, if we had 60 days to live, we would probably act and react a lot differently to life than we do right now. We have had this pandemic that has caused more of us to go to church and more of us to go deeper spiritually. Has it done that? Yeah, ouch. It almost seems like the opposite. It, it, it's, it's appears, it appears that we struggle with eternal perspective. Uh, you wouldn't believe all of the articles right now out there in church circles about decline in spirituality. So I, I don't say all that to, to, to be a downer. I, I say all that to say that I don't know that we, we realize our terminal condition, even when something such as a pandemic stares at us. Uh, we're still not willing to understand our uh, mortality. We just don't seem to know how to live with the end in mind. So we've been doing this little topical study the last several weeks on this subject. What would our lives, that's the scenario we've given, you know, what would our lives look like if we had 60 days to live? There's a good chance if we live that way, we would begin to focus on who and what is truly important in this life for preparation for the next. So we've had a little fun with, with an old song. It's hard to believe that we call it an old song, but it's old, 2004, uh, from the great theologian, right, Tim McGraw. And uh, the dad in the song, in the lyrics of this song, the dad gets a report that he has a terminal disease. By the way, we are all terminal, right? We, we've decided that. And uh, he answers the question on um, how he's going to respond to that report. And he says something like this. He said, and I love deeper and I spoke sweeter and I gave forgiveness I've been denying. And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. I hope someday you get the chance as if it's an opportunity. And it is because when you and I live embracing the terminal condition that we have, it puts things into focus. It, it reframes our stories when we live with that eternal perspective. To, to, you begin to see clearly and do what matters most. And every single one of us will benefit with that kind of clarity in our lives. So uh, we spent the last couple of weeks talking about that, that one lyric in the song, uh, Speaking Sweeter. Uh, let's spend some time with this other lyric in the song. Like I said, we're just having a little fun with this stuff that says loving deeper. I love deeper. Uh, this week, we're going to ask a question or two about love. And then next week, we'll, we'll give it some action steps. So love is a pretty big deal in the Bible, right? The Bible, <laughs> the Bible I mean, it speaks quite a bit about love. Uh, the greatest commandment in all of Scripture. You remember that one? Jesus replied in Matthew 22, 
love your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is what? Like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And then uh, do you remember uh, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13? You might have heard this at your wedding if, if you're married. Uh, the first part of 1 Corinthians 13 says this, If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And then it goes in, to that section of describing love. You know, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it keeps no record of wrongs, all that stuff. And then at the end it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So, the Bible talks a ton about love. The logical assumption, I need you to follow me here, the, the logical assumption would be, with this being such a maturity marker in the believer's life, that as we get older, and therefore as we get wiser, <laughs> that's another assumption I'm making, the older we get, the wiser we get, and as we are getting closer to cashing in on our terminal condition, our hearts would be getting bigger. Our hearts would be getting softer. That when pandemics and protests and whatever else hit, because of that growing maturity, love would be our banner. Well, that does seem logical but it seems like, it appears, that the older we get and the adversity we face, well, if I'm honest, it almost appears at times our hearts get harder and our hearts get smaller. It's kind of interesting, kind of interesting how that works. Maybe interesting is the wrong choice of a word. I guess, I guess we could say this. Uh, becoming a person who, who loves deeply, like the song. I've got someone out here uh, doing some lawn work. I hope that's not interfering too much. But I, I guess we could say, you know, if we follow along with the song, you know, loving deeply. L loving deeply doesn't just happen on its own. It just doesn't, you know. It, it, we we went down this logical road of we when we as we grow and mature and um, know more of God in our lives that that love just somehow gets bigger and opposite is so often true. And so what it means is we have to be intentional with loving deeply. We have to pursue it. Uh, we have to lean into Jesus and choose to be rooted to grow in love and keep our hearts soft, keep our hearts pliable. So with all of that, with all of those considerations, let me ask the question, what is the condition of your heart right now? What's the condition of your heart? As you journey through your life story, is your heart expanding or is your heart shrinking? With our Christian belief, I'm speaking to those of you that, that, that uh, have, have, a, have a relationship with Christ. Are we finding more reasons to love people? Or are we finding more reasons to be critical of people because they don't line up to our standards or they don't line up to God's standards? And I would say God's standards according to me, right? That's kind of how we do that. Are our hearts 
getting bigger or are they getting smaller? I guess maybe that was all more than one question. So here's, here's what we have to do. Here's how, what we have to do to get the answers right to those questions. We must, bi we must dig, I'm sorry, we must dig deeper than just belief in Jesus. We have to choose to know him more. We have to choose to grow an act of faith that's intentional with growing our hearts. We have to choose to become more like the teacher, Jesus. We must understand who he is and who we are according to his truth. It's knowing Jesus more that brings transformation. It's knowing Jesus more that helps our hearts to grow rather than shrink. A couple of verses for you as we wrap this up today. This is love. This is in 1 John. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And then a couple verses later, we love because he first loved us. My wife has a, a picture of that in uh, our, our bathroom upstairs. It's a great reminder for me every day. We love because he first loved us. And then in Romans 8, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I give you those kinds of verses because it's hard to give what we don't have. And for us to love deeply, remember, we, we have this terminal condition. We only have 60 days to live. Something that's going to be very important to us is loving people around us deeply. For us to love deeply, we have to sense God's love in our lives. It's hard to give love if we don't feel loved. But listen to me, those scriptures that I just, just read tell us, tell you how much God loves you. If you'll let him, he will fill the tank every day for you. And we can then love others because he first loved us. And if at any point you struggle with that, bring to mind the image of the cross. Because the cross tells you everything you need to know about God's love for you. The cross tells you that you were valuable enough, that you were important enough, that you were uh, at, the, at the center of God's affection, and that you, you are loved so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And when you start living in those truths and you wake up every day embracing the unconditional love of the Father, it will absolutely allow you, help you to love others more, more deeply. And so today, again, I ask you, what is the condition of your heart? With each passing day, which is one day closer to eternity, is your heart getting bigger or is your heart getting smaller? If you find your heart a little bit shriveled right now, what I want you to do this week is to lean into the love of the Father. Embrace what you mean to Him and watch your heart grow. It might just be time to reconnect to that love of the Heavenly Father. I promise you, if you do that, you'll be glad you did. God loves you so very much.
The cross tells you that every day. Let's pray together, wrap it up. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this time together. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, just uh, talk about you, to understand more of you in our lives, and help us to realize today uh, and every day that knowing you more is what wins. It's what wins. I'll just end that with a period. Knowing you more helps us win. It, it transforms us. When we go deeper with you, we, we find victory and purpose for life. When we experience and know more of your love, it helps us love others more deeply. Help us to realize those connections today, God. And so if we look at the condition of our heart today and we find that maybe our heart has gotten smaller over the last couple of years rather than larger, may we find ourselves going deeper in your love for us. We love because you first loved us. And we're thankful today for that love. We want to wake up every day fully convinced of your love for us. Your cross tells us everything we need to know about that love. And you're not going to love us any more tomorrow than what you do right now. Nothing changes how much you love us. Thank you for that today, God. Help us to live with that love and help us to then give it away to the world around us. We thank you again today for who you are, for what you mean to our lives. You are good for us. You are good to us. You are good. Help us to finish the week well. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, great hanging out with you today. God bless you. Um, you've got this. You've got this week you will finish it strong. You've got it because what? God has you. And you're going to love a little more. You're going to love a little deeper because you're going to take some time to embrace how unconditionally, incredibly, sacrificially God loves you. Take care. God bless. Praying for you.